Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to test out this mag drill. I've been talking lately on the channel that I really want to increase my fabricating skills so that when I have some kind of tool or equipment that I want to modify or something simple like adding some hooks to my tractor bucket or something like that, I can just go out and do it instead of finding someone who can come help me. So when I got an offer for a welder to review on the channel, that was a no-brainer. But then I got an email asking if I wanted to try a mag drill. And I thought, now why do I need a mag drill? I don't know much about mag drills, but I already have a drill press. And so I kind of turned this product down. And then one day I saw a review from a friend of mine, uh, Andrew Kelly at the Kelly's Country Life, and he was using a mag drill. And I was blown away. I had no idea the capability of a little piece of equipment like this and why, in some cases, it's better or more capable than a standard drill press. Now, there are other applications where you're better off with the drill press. Every tool has its own purpose. But once I got a look at it on his video, I watched a bunch of videos on mag drills and said I have to have one. So let's start at the beginning for someone who, like myself, didn't know much about a mag drill. The name tells you about half of everything you need to know about it. It is a magnet and a drill combined. So we have a big magnetic base that attaches it to the workpiece. Now I was able to work that out <laughs> all by myself. Pretty proud. But the part I didn't understand is the added functionality. So my assumption was that this was just a miniature drill press with a magnetic base making it portable. But it's actually more than that, because if it was just a miniature drill press, it would come with a chuck like this. Now, it comes with a chuck like this, but most people don't use it with a chuck like this. This lets you adapt to putting regular drill bits on it by using this adapter right here to screw into this chuck, which takes up to half-inch bits. Now, this came with it, which is a really nice add-on. But primarily, what you use this type of a mag drill with is these annular bits right here. It's more, it looks more like a milling bit. I guess it kind of looks like a hole saw. But the purpose of these is to drill really clean, almost machined holes. And because you're not removing all the material and trying to grind, let's say... This can cut up to an inch and a half diameter hole. If you want to use an inch and a half drill bit, you have to grind out and remove every bit of that inch and a half material. And that's a lot of cutting. That's going to take a lot more power. It's going to wear your bits out. But by only removing the exterior of, of the hole, it's a lot easier to get a machine capable of handling that task. So what we have is this bit right here and then a center punch that helps you get started on your material, but also this is kind of spring-loaded, and it tries to help you push the plug out because you have a metal plug when you're done, kind of like a hole saw does. Now, as I watched other reviews on this exact product, one guy pointed out the crazy amount of value you get here because this tool comes in at like $329 or $349, and then you can get a discount from someone like myself, and I'll put this discount code in the description of the video. But it makes it really affordable. But the crazy part is that these annular bits are super expensive. And they give you 11 of these bits with the mag drill. So you probably couldn't buy 11 of these for the cost of the drill. Now as far as actually using it, we're going to put this in here. And we've got two flat spots. And then, I bet you guessed it already, there are corresponding set screws aligned with those flat spots. And we just slide the tool up in there, make, tighten it down about 90%, make sure that we've got a little bit of wiggle, we know we're on the flats, and then we lock it down. One review I watched on this, they drilled like, I think it was 10 or 15 holes in like 3 8 inch solid steel and all with the same bit without dulling it out. 
That's another advantage. These are going to last you a lot longer than a regular drill bit. So another difference between this type of drilling and drilling with a regular twist bit is, well, it's almost like milling. And that means you need cutting fluid to keep your, your bit cool. There's no setup at all on this. I just took it out of the box. I screwed these three handles in and it is now ready to use. There were two other things in the box. One is a coolant reservoir and the other is a strap. I'll get to the strap in a minute. The coolant reservoir, everybody said it works, but it's not really necessary. It's, you know, you've got an adjustment on here for how fast you want it to flow. And that's just kind of like one more thing to mess with. And this is one handed operation. So there's no reason you can't just squirt coolant on it. So that's enough talking. Let's drill a few holes. And then I've got a few other things I want to tell you about this. I got this from Vivor and they make a version of this that has a lot more functionality here, like a speed control. But the reviews I was seeing said that this single speed works just fine for most applications. So we only have two switches. This one turns the unit on and activates the magnet. This one starts the bit spinning. I think I was wrong about the cutting fluid. Might be worth using that bottle. It'd be something that you'd have to use trial and error on. But using WD-40 as cutting fluid was a poor choice for this. It didn't work that well and WD-40 is expensive. Need to buy some actual cutting fluid. It'd be worth it. Also, this mag drill is available from Vivor with a speed control or without and the price difference doesn't seem that big. I'm no expert here, but it just seems like it would cut a little bit better if you slowed it down and used a better cutting fluid. This thing felt like it struggled a little bit cutting through that, but there may be a few reasons for that. And if you really think about it, what inexpensive homeowner tool can drill a perfectly clean inch and a quarter hole through a, like a 3 16 or quarter inch angle iron like that? If you need a cl nice clean hole through thick material, I mean... You're, this is probably the best bang for your buck you're going to get. Now, there's one thing right now that I'm not crazy about with this, and it, the fact that the magnet doesn't feel strong enough. So when I turn this on... Okay, now that's not a test of the magnet. That's where I've clamped the angle iron on. So maybe that's why it still felt shaky. At first, I had it just on the table, and it really felt weak. But then if you think about it, there's not enough thickness of metal there to really give it strength. So let's go put this magnet on something a little more robust and see how strong the magnet is. Because in Andrew's video, he has the bigger version of this, but he was really, he had it up on a vertical beam and he was really trying to rip it off and that magnet was so strong it wouldn't come off. So let's go see how this one stacks up. If you didn't notice, I'm out here working at night again. 
that's just how it goes sometimes. Now, this is more substantial. If it won't stick to this, I mean, it's just the magnet's not strong enough. Okay, so it's going to hold itself to drill. I'm putting a pretty hard pressure on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that magnet's plenty strong. It just, it's not strong if what you're clamping to isn't substantial. Now, it came with a strap, and you might want more than one strap or a heavier strap than that but the idea is what if you're cutting with this and you trip the breaker all of a sudden your work's going to fall on you maybe in the middle of drilling could be dangerous so if you're drilling you know on a horizontal surface like this you want to you know strap it down as a backup plan but as it is that ain't going nowhere 